Uh, good afternoon. You're listening to Biz Buzz. This is Marlo FM. My name's Mark Harris. Uh, mine's Mike Duckett. And we are co-presenters on every other Thursday afternoon, which is a bit of a mouthful. Um, is but it the mic? And Mark, or no, this Mark. is the Mark and Mike show. I'm Sorry. driving the desk today. Um, Mike and I take turns doing that bit. And we have a number of firsts today. It's the first time we've had four guests in the studio, so, hey, that's pretty good. Let me just count them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's not the first time we've had gender balance because there's been Mike and I and two women before, but we now have three men and three women in the studio, so that's a first for us as well. And we normally just talk about business news stories, um, across a wide range of topics but today we're talking about GDPR which is uh, the General Data Protection Regulations and if that means nothing to you hopefully by the time an hour and a half's gone by it'll mean a lot to you and we're also going to have some good music that our guests and ourselves have chosen um, some of which have really tenuous links to GDPR but those will unfold as the show progresses so let me um, let me start by introducing our first guest who is Hilary Messer from Garda Leader how are you I'm very well, thank you, and thank you for inviting me here today. A distinct pleasure, madam. Um, you are a legal firm, GDPR is a law, um, and we will talk about the law shortly, but but tell me about Garden Leader. You're based in, well, I was going to say you're based in Maiden, I think you're based in Maidenhead, but where's the firm based? Personally, I am based in Maidenhead. We've got three offices, so Maidenhead office is in Frascati Way, we have a small office in Thatcham, and then we have a rather larger offering in Newbury, the firm has been in business since 1895. Wow. So we're long standing in Berkshire, but of course we offer our legal services much wider geographically. And I'm a litigator in the practice, so I do the suing or the defending. Better still, you come to me to prevent needing to sue or being sued. And what we offer at Gardner Leader is peace of mind. Okay, and you've not been there since 1895? No, no, although it does sometimes feel like <laughs> this, is, this is my... You didn't prosecute John Dice v. No, John Dice, did you? No, funny you should say that, though, because um, those kind of cases do have a habit of going on for an exceptionally mm. long period of yeah. time, uh, contested probate cases. No, I have been practising my area of law for the last... <coughs> 30 years, uh, but I've been at Gardner Leader. This is now my third year. Not, not bad for a woman of 35, I'm impressed. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ever the um, and from a GDPR perspective, what if you're a litigation lady, you, have you become the GDPR expert at Gardner Leader? Um, I have become one of them. So I've done a number of seminars and presentations over the last 18 months, and I have become increasingly concerned with a number of individuals and businesses who think GDPR doesn't apply to them. So ah. we'll demystify that, hopefully, this afternoon. Excellent, excellent. That, I'm, I'm looking forward to that happening because I need demystification. Um, and Joella Helen from Smartcom, how are you? Hello, Mark. I'm good, thank you. It's been a long time since you sat in this studio. Yes, indeed. You used to wear a different hat, but you now tell me Smartcom, I think with a double him. It is um, with the So I'm going to guess it's clever communications. Do you know, it's very close. We design, install and support uh, AV communications and IT systems for, we've got three divisions, commercial, residential and a service and support division. Ooh. Is that a phrase you've used before, that, that this is what we do, that rolled off your <laughs> it tongue? It rolled off, didn't it? So, OK, what do I, if, if I need your services, what do I need? What, what might I want Ooh. that you're going to come and do for me? Well, if it was your home, you might want a home cinema, a family room with fabulous okay. displays and music. Yes, we do. It's right. a residential side. Um, if you have a business, you might want a uh, meeting room uh, mm -hmm. displays. You might want... Video conferencing. I was going to say you're getting. I mean, video conferencing is getting bigger and bigger as as it yeah. gets cheaper and cheaper. Um, partly cheaper, cheaper and cheaper to to transmit. You know, I FaceTime and and WhatsApp with people all over the world, which is fabulous for nothing. I love it, but but presumably commercial in applications have to be a bit more robust. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's it's a different. You have your home office, but um, it's a whole different scenario with the with it with an an office that is going to be used by hundreds of people all the time. Mm -hmm. So you're presumably communicating with lots of customers and lots of prospects and even suppliers and stuff. So GDPR is something that's taken over your life? It is imp it's impacting, but I think there are lots of benefits. Um, and certainly in terms of preparing for GDPR, 
and okay. the information audit that we have we've had to do. Okay, now you are. I've spoken to lots of people about GDPR over whatever period. You're the first person to say that it's got benefits. Most people find it a burden. So maybe when we come back and we start talking through some of what GDPR is about and and what businesses out there should be doing, we can um, we can come back to that. It reminds me many years ago when I was corporately employed. 1895. Yeah, exactly. Jandis Virgandis was one of my cases. Um, we uh, we were worried about European regulations as they applied to business because we were in a fairly dominant position. And somebody said to us, well, you need to use it. Use the law as a competitive tool. You know, you, you'll be able to uh, restrict what some of your competitors do. So there's always an upside. There's always an upside. I'm quite a positive person. Yeah. We know this. Um, and next to you is Sarah Lawton from Simply Operations. I do like a, a, a company name. Oh, we've got squeaky microphone thingies here. Got to bring in some no WD-40 late. next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Simply Operations is the company name. I like a company name that says what the company does. So tell me, what do Simply Operations do? <laughs> well, hi, Mark. Um, it, it says what it does on the tin, really, basically. It's... Um, it's helping sort of small to medium sized companies with their operations so making sure that they are managing their back office functions sort of as effectively as they can be um sort of looking at all the systems processes to make sure that they're not dropping the ball in any way okay you say small to medium sized lots of people have their own interpreter how small and and how big is um, uh, how how big a company would would a company have to be for you to say you might be a bit big for me um, generally, I would say up to about 10 people. Okay. Um, yes, because so you can go over that generally. You'll find people have, who've got their own staff who can help out. Yeah. And, and I think that for a lot of businesses of that kind of scale, the operations, they're, they're great at what they do, whether they're photographers or accountants or whatever it is, but the mechanics around how the business runs is what you help them with, yeah? That's, that's right. And there's so many um, systems and things out there as well now that actually that a lot of people aren't aware of that can make their life much easier and save them lots of time so that they can focus on their own business. Okay, thank you. And our fourth and final guest is um, Chris Bantock. My brain's got stuck your company name is be seen marketing be seen marketing yeah 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 you another. know what we were talking earlier about another marketing company and their name was stuck in my head so yeah be seen marketing um based in beaconsfield Indeed. oh i got that bit right so that's good up in the old town and did you bring your passport to get here today because it's a long way you know oh yes long way, <laughs> long way. um so be seen marketing marketing you're a marketing agency so yeah. somebody presumably who either doesn't have their own marketing or needs to outsource for some overflow work those are the kinds of people you work with uh yes we we work with small or medium businesses um and they have a variety of requirements some people don't have the marketing function in-house and we can support them with that or they don't have the necessarily the technical skills or that and we can help them with that okay and marketing is a very very broad church do, uh, do you have specialisms is it all, yeah, we're, or we're predominantly a digital marketing agency okay so that's focusing on on website development including e-commerce mm-hmm. um, but more importantly then working with clients to get that value back from what they've invested into the website okay by driving what most businesses want which is leads inquiries and sales i like i like the marketing language that you're using Uh, you're you're not buying a website or spending on a website you're investing in a website because for especially where e-commerce is concerned there should be a return on that investment and that's what you're you're helping people do so same same question as i asked sarah you said small to medium she's talking one to ten as her definition of small to medium I'm guessing slightly larger for slightly you. Slightly larger, yes. Um, company size is is very different, difficult to mm-hmm. to evaluate sometimes. Um, uh, our largest client is uh, probably about five million turnover business. Okay. So um, okay. it ranges hugely from you know the, the smaller end, you know, yep. five man yeah. business all all the way up. Cool. And Good I'm going to guess as well that GDPR's bound to have some sort of effect on your marketing ability 
Are you sinking? I'm sinking. <laughs> sinking chair. No, you're not. Your chair is sinking. Oh, my very eyes. I thought, that's not too difficult a question. Why is he leaving? <laughs> and, of course, yeah, when you say your marketing ability, it's your ability yeah. to market yourselves, but also you're advising all you're these other businesses people. on marketing. You're creating marketing for other people, and so you're presumably having to take GDPR into consideration well, when you're... As, as a business, them. yes, we have to... Do the same as every Comply. other business. Yeah. I'm interested to hear yeah. what sort of changes it might lead to. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But also, we're you know we're sort of advising our clients and making them aware of of the impact, especially around their their digital communications. Right. There you go. Okay. Well, while we're while we're talking to you, let me ask you one other question before your chair sinks into oblivion. Um, and then the other question is you chose uh, Dow Hall John Oates and you chose Private Eyes. I think I can guess why you chose that for this particular radio show, but, <laughs> but do elaborate why. Um, I was just trying to think of uh, some appropriate uh, songs and this was a, a one that came up and a, and a real blast from the past for me. A blast from the past. A blast and from the past. Absolutely. So uh, a little bit of privacy stuff, private eyes, Daryl Hall and John Oates. Daryl Hall and John Oates, private eyes, a, a clear allusion to general data protection regulations we, we and all privacy. got some sort of, sec, apart from me, some sort of tenuous link between um, data protection and I the music. I don't think you've Joanna played. has. Yep. Have you? Oh, really? No. <laughs> we'll we'll get to that on a on a piece of music by piece of music basis. But uh, there are some allusions to the topic. Okay. Well, let's My get off of the, the allusions. <laughs> let's start the business proper. So we've got enough yep. time, well, to try and cover the subject. Actually. Yeah. <clears throat> and I was wondering where to start. What's what's the angle on this? And most people I've spoken to, it's been. Well, does this really affect me? So what? What difference will it make to me? And I'll just carry on as I am. Is it really Is it really going to be any penalty for me? Will they catch me? Will it matter? So I suppose it's the legal angle that we might just start with. And as I said before, normally there's some kind of benefit to this, but nobody I know has yet said to me, I'm looking forward. I think, I think there's going to be some benefit when the GDPR... Regula when the regulations come in. So, Hilary, tell us what your take on GDPR is. Well, in a nutshell, because you yep, could spend, it, as you say, a whole seminar. But uh, Yeah, I've been giving seminars on this anywhere between half an hour and an hour plus questions. But first thing I want to say is it is a single regulation. Both of you, and everyone falls into this trap, has been saying it's the General Data Protection Regulations. It is a single regulation. Is there only one? It's 260 pages long if you bother to print it off. I do not recommend it. And it's set out in 11 chapters with 99 articles. And we've all become a bit more familiar with this concept of articles because of Brexit and Article 50. And yes, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of misinformation out there as well. And there's a lot of scaremongering. But... The fundamental point that I would like everyone in this room to focus on and all of our listeners is one thing. The purpose of this regulation is to ensure that for individuals, for you, for me, for all of us, protection of our personal data is a fundamental right. And by data, I mean anything, any information that identifies a living person. So that's the upside. It's for the benefit of all of us as people to have our personal data protected. Okay. Now, it's not new. I'm going to say, hasn't that always been the case? We know the Inter Information Commissioner and, and all that. Would... You're quite right. So none of it's new. 1995, a mm. little bit of a history lesson, we had the European Directive on Data Protection. And a directive is different from a regulation. So directives don't have direct effect in law. So what we had to do in this country is we passed the Data Protection Act 1998 so 1995 directive 1998 and the GDPR this singular regulation just builds upon that data protection regulation and if you like it's the next evolutionary stage because um, why do we need it well as a heck of a lot has happened in the last 20 years and the creation of this personal data it's been exponential if you think about it from your loyalty store cards you know and then they send you the special offers they're gathering information about you and what you actually do um social media all of the information that you put out there the way we communicate electronically 
our personal data is everywhere and it's with everyone. And by everyone, I don't just mean other people. I mean other businesses, other organisations. So think about it. Your residential address, your IP address, photographs, videos, your telephone number, anything that directly or indirectly allows you to be identified as a living individual is data and it's data, personal data, that gets protection under this regulation. And Article 99 says that, the very last article, this regulation comes into force on the 25th of May 2018. The That's May. the key date. Yeah. Um, it's That's 92 one. days away because we've all been working it out. <laughs> Last time we did a seminar in on the 4th of January, it was 140 days, and that seemed quite close. That's actually 63 working days. Yep. Wow. But we've had <laughs> two years to get ready for this. So there are no excuses. This regulation came in in April 2016, and we've known the start date for all of this time. And, of course, we all go, oh, well, we'll deal with it tomorrow, and tomorrow never comes. Well, let me tell you, this is coming. Mm -hmm. um, there are, as I'm sure we're going to discuss this afternoon, lots of people out there who steadfastly believe that GDPR doesn't apply to them. Well, uh, let me tell you, it undoubtedly will. So... If you were to ask me, prompt to ask me, uh, <laughs> oh, let me who ask does you. GDPR <laughs> apply to? Ashley, here it. Can I ask a question? Who yeah. does GDPR apply to? How funny you should say that, Mark. <laughs> um, the regulation applies to two categories of. Um, I want. I'm going to say people because we all know that behind every business there is a person running it or several people running it. You have the controllers and you have the processors, and these are key phrases within the regulation. So, the controller is the person, again, I'm going to use that, that word, who determines the purposes and the means of processing this personal data, this information that identifies the living person. And the processor is responsible for processing it, doing stuff with it, on behalf of another entity called a controller. And if you're a processor, the regulation places specific obligations on you as to what you have to do. So, for example, you've got to maintain records of this personal data that you hold, and you've got to maintain records of the activities, what you're actually doing with it. So you've got to maintain records of the records and then record what you record. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is an outcome-focused regulation. You're mm. going to be judged on what happens at the end of the day. And remember what I said, the purpose of this is to make protection of our personal data a fundamental right and so you have to have one of the things that no doubt we'll talk about is privacy by design you've got to design systems to make sure you don't breach the uh, data breach the privacy of all of us as as individuals and if you're a controller don't think that just because you've given it to some separate entity or processor to deal with it you're relieved of any of your obligations because you're you're not the regulation places a further obligation on you as a controller to make sure you've got a suitable contract in place with your processor to ensure you don't breach the regulation in the first place. So, all a bit technical so far. Yeah. Um, and you might be going, but yeah, it doesn't apply to me because, you know, you mentioned the article and Brexit and we're leaving, aren't we? Well, hmm, Brexit or no Brexit, you're going to have to comply because this regulation applies to any processing of data that's carried out anywhere with anybody in the European Union. And when this regulation comes into force on the 25th of May, we are still in the European Union. And if we want to continue to trade with individuals in the European Union, we either have to have the regulation in place and it's law at the moment or an equivalent and frankly we're spending a lot of money changing the law we don't need to have another layer so this is it this is the regulation and, and which I right in saying that from, from from that legal perspective which is where you're coming from clearly um it's not it's got nothing to do with the uk or brexit it's a global thing so if there's if i bought if i buy a t-shirt online from a guy in phoenix arizona and he misuses my data. He's broken our law. No, because it's right? EU. It's individuals is it only in the EU. EU? Yeah. This is an okay. EU regulation. Okay. So if it's, an, if it's a EU country that breached did something with an American customer's information, you'd still be governed by the law. You well, you did something you, wrong. You, with you remember what I said, what is the purpose? It is to protect, protect yeah. the personal data of EU 
individuals. Mm -hmm. Now, we may be leaving the EU, but we're going to have an equivalent regulation in any event. Mm -hmm. And in order to make sure we're not sued at the end of the day, remember, that's what I do, suing and defending you from being sued, um, you need to make sure that you don't breach that EU citizen's uh, privacy. Okay. So... The fact that you might be dealing with someone in America, I'm sure the different states in America have all sorts yeah. of different rules. And unless they complained to the European Union about the way we treated them, and it, 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 it's not, well, it's not I, I, the reality is that the and we'll come to this, I'm, I'm sure, a bit later on. It's the Information Commissioner who, mm. at the moment, is responsible for monitoring data protection, and it's also going to be the Information Commissioner's office who is responsible for dealing with breaches of this okay. new regulation um, and applying the swinging wanna, fines, which we'll come to later. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I want to. I need to play a piece of music in a minute, but before I do, let me ask a question. Supposing I do get it wrong and I do break the law, what are the penalties? At the moment, a maximum fine of half a million pounds and okay. under GDPR, 4% of global turnover, not profit, turnover, wow. which is a very different concept, or 20 million euros, whichever is the greater. Wow. So and little old me or little old you with your business could be fined 20 million euros and, you know, you could, global uh, megacorp could be fined 4% of global turnover. Yes, I mean, the chances of you and me and our small businesses being fined 20 million is probably remote. <laughs> they can if you they like, but they're not going to get it. So. Well, but the, the reality is, and I firmly believe this, and this is what I say when I go out and, and talk to other businesses, the purpose is to make sure you comply. And mm. those businesses who, quite frankly, can't be bothered to comply or think it doesn't apply to them will be put out of business. And frankly, that's good for us all because, remember, yeah. this is about yeah, protecting our personal data. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you, um, you chose for us... A Blondie track. I did. Which has some relevance to the topic. Yes. The track is Call Me. It is. So, um, I like Blondie. I thought she was pretty awesome. She and I share a love of changing our hair colour, although she was a bit more dramatic than me, and I think her hair <laughs> fell out eventually. Mine hasn't yet. Um, but Call Me, there's a slight um, variation on the title. It's Call Me any time so long as I have opted in and it is unambiguous <laughs> consent and you have recorded it. <laughs> Do you know what? As pop songs go, that hasn't got a ring to it. <coughs> so I'm not going to play that one. I'm going to play Call Me by Blondie instead. Thank you. Tenuous link, tenuous link number two. Out of no, the way. It's not very tenuous. It's quite it's good. good no, I quite like Marketing that. I like calls, call me. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Now let's turn our attention now to uh, marketing. <clears throat> but in the studio, we've got we've got two angles on marketing. There is uh, uh, Chris from BC, and, and yours is the agency angle. So you're That's going right. to be doing a lot of work for a lot of different companies, <coughs> hopefully. <coughs> Excuse me. And you've got to be aware of the legal angle on this. But that's going to affect what people can do and the way we run campaigns, I'm assuming. Indeed. So what, what's your take on the way GDPR is going to affect marketing? OK, I think, um, first of all, for marketing people within businesses, it's a great opportunity because it's, it's a chance for them to really sort of shine and contribute to, to the growth within a business because you know, they have... They have to be aware of this this law, um, and it really impacts the way businesses communicate out there, whether that is a business to business or a business to consumer. It, it still applies. Um, but I think from a a website and a uh, online marketing point of view, um, put the the sort of the the policies and the audits and and the processes to one side because we'll be dealing with that later but the the website is probably the biggest shop window onto any business Hmm. so from an ICO point of view they can have a look at a company's website and immediately so whether that's compliant or not why would a website not be because um, the whole regulation around how you gain consent. Ah. So, f- for example, um, 
prevalent amongst lots of websites is the the pre-ticked box mm. when you sign up for something. I thought that was already illegal that it had to be pre-unticked, but a lot of websites I go on it's it's pre-ticked. The pre-tick, but um, so it, it's the way you gain that mm. person's consent, and it's also around being very very clear because clarity is one of the uh, one of the things that GDPR is driving as to what it is that you're signing up to. Mm. Mm. Um, the other thing that people will be looking out for is to make sure that you have all the right terms and conditions and privacy policies and statements all, are, on, the all on the website. Mm. And in the old days, not saying that you did, but you could advise somebody. Tell you what, we'll run a campaign for you. It'll get a lot of sign-ups because we'll have a pre-tick box that says, you know... <clears throat> Do you want to have stuff, and you have to untick it? You, you you would have done all that, but you can't do that anymore. So it it doesn't sound like an upside for marketing at the moment. The upside really is is more about quality than right. quantity. Yeah, so it's an upside if you if you want to play the white hat rather than the dark hat uh, role. Yeah, and one of my one of my key viewpoints on on GDPR is actually what it's driving is what what we've been doing for a long time which is mm. permission based marketing yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's getting people's permission to be able to communicate with them mm. and what GDPR is is it's the law catching up with the technology with good practice yeah. and good practice yeah. so actually it is a framework for responsible marketing Mm. And it's mm. what what businesses should be doing, and the whole regulation really is to stop all those people that are not marketing responsibly, that where we're getting all the spam emails and etc. Yeah. yeah, and I'm assuming that that is the upside that I uh, I envisaged when Hillary was very keen to point out. You know, this is a good thing. I'm saying, what's good about it for me? It is for me, isn't it? Because I do get sometimes plagued by unwanted calls, yeah. uh, emails. I don't mind mail. I never really have because that's easy to deal with. A quick, But I, I feel like I'm bombarded with it if I make so much as a general inquiry uh, mm. with, I don't know, some company, AA, RAC, mm. one of those, anything about I'm going on holiday, bang. And all of a sudden, my data has gone around the world to other companies selling yeah. it. That's not going to happen anymore. So I should be pleased about that. Well, it is going to happen is it? because... People are organisations are going to breach this regulation. Ah, right. What you can do about it is a is a, is a different I have more area of discussion. Do about it than I would have been you do you have a lot more that you can do about it. And of course, as I mentioned before, the fines are so much higher. So, however it is that the information is used or or misused, not so much on that email spamming. But you remember Talk Talk a couple yeah. of years yeah, ago yeah, got fined four hundred thousand yeah, pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The equivalent under GDPR would be £59 million. Now, they're going to be a bit more careful <laughs> if that's the kind of fine. Mm, that's big bucks, that's big bucks. So, Chris, mm. if somebody, you know, you have lots of different clients come to you, lots of different sizes, industries, whatever. If somebody comes to you and says, we want to market in this way, and with your knowledge of GDPR, you know they can't do that, is it, is it a flat no? Is it, a, you know, you won't do that? Uh, and do you know who gets into trouble if they have a non-compliant website with a privacy section that isn't is it you for writing it and building it or is it them because it's theirs or is it not an issue because you wouldn't do it I, well, <laughs> there is that um, a part of our role is to provide right advice and, and guidance to, to our clients mm. so Ultimately, it's their choice whether they heed it or, or not. Mm. But um, so, and I think at the end of the day, it would, you know, it would be them that would be um, liable for any sort of prosecution. Mm. Well, uh, it, that depends on whether you're hosting their site, for example. If you were hosting their site, because don't forget that distinction between the processor and the controller. And what I said before about yeah. if you are um, um, controlling but someone else is doing the processing, you need to make sure that you have a good contract in place because at the end of the day, the ICO is going to fine both of you, mm -hmm. but you want a contract so you can get an indemnity from them. And I mean, hopefully it's not going to happen, but there are going to be, I think, lots of breaches and lots of fines in the early days. Yeah. As I said, weeding out of those non-compliance. And, and we're beginning to get requests from clients now for 
you know, GDPR yeah. compliance yeah. statements so that That's they can put it in for I their records. It actually yeah. increase the traffic to your office because people are waking yeah. up and saying, actually, we need an expert on this. You know, <clears throat> our marketing team are fairly junior and they've done a pretty good job at mailing out and all the rest of it. We don't need an agency, but we do now. So is that that's an opportunity for you as an agency? It's an opportunity for us, yes. Um, not to go in and do the whole GDPR gambit in in terms of uh, of the you know being compliant throughout the whole business, but from our point of view, you know, being compliant from a marketing perspective, mm. making sure that you know your lists are clean. What is that process to to get compliant from a marketing perspective? You know the 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 whole thing about you know hosting websites. Yes, we we're a data processor, so we have to have those things in place to satisfy our clients. So GDPR. So, yeah. So businesses statements. who want to, if I can put it this way, abdicate responsibility can come to you. And I have to point out there are other agencies out there. I know you don't like me <laughs> pointing that out, but there are other. There but are. You can go to an an agency and say, look, just do this for us um and i think when we get as far as talking to sarah about what do you do then that will will crop up uh, in a minute we're going to turn to joanna and talk about the perspective of somebody internal, whose day job is marketing, marketing is your is your job but before we do we're going to play your choice in music which is feel the love by rudimental um featuring john newman i have to say for contractual obligations um why? Why did you choose this? You, you are there. Well, uh, my original sound uh, music choice, it was going to be uh, Walk Like Jagger by Maroon 5, but um, because, like, you don't just talk the talk, you need to walk the walk, indeed, which I thought was a great GDPR indeed, yeah, segue, yeah. but the lyrics were a bit naughty, so um, <laughs> instead I went for the optimistic option, you know, feel the love, It's look, it's coming, let's embrace it, let's just look on the positive side and just go for it. Let's feel the love, let's go for it. Joanna's looking at me because she was waiting for me to talk all over the top of Rudimental and I didn't do it. I knew there were about four false endings to that track. So uh, there you go. So your internal marketing now. So we've, we've had a perspective, Chris, uh, from an agency perspective who's going to be working with companies and uh, all sorts of companies. But you're an internal marketing person. Janet. Yes. So you have to understand some of this you may have to turn to a an expert on marketing and an expert on the law but you're the internal person that needs to understand it and make it work from a marketing perspective how's it going to affect you do you think i, I think we've been quite lucky in the company i work for so we've been around since not 1895 but 1995 <laughs> um so we've so we've been a while. I think I think what's been really interesting and what's been really positive is that uh, just over a year ago we decided actually that and, and it was part of it was about understanding that this was coming up, that the 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 law was tightening up. But I think it was good from a business perspective that we decided to uh, consolidate a lot of our information in a new um, CRM system, and it dovetails really nicely uh, with GDPR. Um, because it, when a business builds organically, uh, you get lots of information silos. And so this whole information audit was a fantastic opportunity to have a look at what information we're holding, where is it being held, how are we getting this information, do we need it, what, what, what do we need? And then I think it's a great opportunity to um, clear out the data we don't need, make sure the data we do have is relevant and up to date. Um, are we up to speed at the moment? No. If it came in tomorrow, we'd be in trouble. But the ICO, uh, which is the Information Commissioner's Office, have a great 12-step plan to get your business up to speed. And we've kind of just used that as a template. We've been going through it. Um, and I think that's really, I feel really positive about it. I think there are two forms of marketing, which is quite interesting. When you're talking about internal marketing, I think there is the internal marketing, and that's within the company, um, understanding who is taking that data, who's holding that data, how are they treating that data. And I think that the awareness, I mean, the awareness is is, is far, the first step actually is awareness, especially in uh, upper management, and, and that's gone throughout the company. But mm. I think once our system is 
rolled out fully and it's only partly rolled out at the moment our new system then i think it will be in terms of internal marketing will be a sort of like almost a training exercise into the gdpr and what we need to do and i think that's a really important aspect um in terms of external marketing i see this as a huge opportunity to reconnect with customers to make sure that they that that opt-in is a great yeah. way to reconnect it's another a, reason to say hello exactly and you know yeah. i'm a communicator and i Give me an excuse to talk to somebody, and I'll. Yeah. I'm talking. Yeah. Get so, away, not you. Sure. <laughs> I know a little shy, of retiring me. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a great opportunity. It's it's like really to benefit the people that you're getting in touch with. Mm. And as you said, you know, you said it. It was like it is to benefit us, and I think we should just look at it as a really positive step. It's hard work, but it will in the in the long run. I think it will tighten up. Mm. And it's interesting. I've had a few, an increasing number of emails from people saying, "Would you like to?" receive our newsletter and each time i think yeah you know what that's a good question would i like to and some i'm saying no thanks and see you around and others i'm saying yeah actually i do i read your newsletter i get value from it it helps me um and i was interested by as well by what you said about the 12 point template that the information and commissioner's mm. office does which you conveniently have in the studio which let me point out this is radio i know <laughs> but you can um, read from it <laughs> yeah yeah because i I've, I've said to a couple of people that you know it's there and they said oh obviously that'll be rubbish because it's a government thing because yeah but from what you're saying actually it's not rubbish and you are using it as a template to to drive your work forward yes i think it was i personally thought it was a great uh, Mm. it's a great summary it's easy terms to understand i'm not legal you know um lucky you it's a practical document this is what you want to do follow these steps and it'll be yes if i'm not mistaken Are the last three only applicable to large corporations? I seem to remember reading this somewhere. The the preliminary to it on the ICO website said, don't panic because the last three that sound onerous are really only applicable to larger organisations. You can read it and come back to us on that later. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know. When it says international, um, I suppose if your operation operates in more than one EU member state, um, if I sold on eBay... If I had a little company and I sold on eBay something to France, am I operating in one? So actually, I could be quite a small business mm. and yet still operating cross borders. Yeah, you've just made me think actually of probably a, Hillary will tell us this whether they do quite but a larger number of people than I ever thought. People who are doing selling a few things on eBay regularly or online. If you have a, an e shop and you sell, yeah. so I suppose actually, so I don't know if it's just mm. but for, for the company I work for, for Smartcom. Yes, we operate it. We operate globally, so oh. this is. You've got to follow all ten steps. We've got to follow steps, all, sorry, <laughs> the 12, all twelve steps. Yeah. You know, we're not a huge company, but we're a good sized company. We're just in High Wycombe. Mm. But so, yeah. if we're looking for a top tip for our listeners, that's your top tip, is it? Yeah, go, go to, to the, the ICO. ICO. Is it on the ICO Definitely. website? On the download. just type in ICO GDPR, and you will literally just get a link straight to this. And, and Chris is nodding, and and. Yeah, I'm not and, and, and trying to find and Hillary's also nothing. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, actually, the ICO website is it's got a lot of very very good information. That's just a, so surprising to lot, hear. And a lot of real real <laughs> right. good. Guidance. There's a clue in the title of the organisation. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, since when did the I government mean, do we anything well? In? Is, you know, is the impact of sort of cookies. Um, cookies. The, the ICO has a 31 page guidance to on the use cookie of cookies. Technology. Wow. Okay, yeah, right. But Bedtime reading. This twelve-step yeah. one page. I mean, there is a, it's a twenty-nine-page document, but the it, the summarised twelve steps. I mean, it's great. Okay, it's really there's, easy. There's also another one which I had a look at yesterday, where you go in and it it takes you through the principles, and it says it makes a statement, and then it says whether you it's multiple choice, done absolutely nothing, done a bit, done a, and if you just go through. I did it just to see what happened. Leaving everything has done absolutely nothing. When you get to the end and submit, it then tells you in very plain language what to do. It's absolutely superb because the one thing everybody can do is inform themselves. And is that also and then on the ask ICO? Questions. That's on the yeah. ICO website. Yeah. 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 Do you know what? I'm going to have to go to that you website are? and have yeah. a little look mm. around. Well, you probably have to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's important. Yeah. But I, I, for, to close down the marketing... What I'm interested to hear is from both people's perspective here, it's simply best practice. So it's going to encourage best practice, which you've been in all the time. So it might get rid of some of the, what I call the dark hat marketers. Absolutely. And I, I would hope it would, it's highlighted to me 
So to make sure that I'm compliant and make sure that any messaging that goes out, I'm going to be extra wary that I don't... Because, as Hilary said, it doesn't need to be a full name and address to identify someone. Um, mm. I'm the only Joanna at Smartcom. So if mm. something goes out with Joanna at Smartcom did something, then that immediately identifies it as me, even mm. though you wouldn't think it would. But that's a bit of personal data. <laughs> okay. And, and it could even be, you know, if there's an email marketing at Smartcom dot whatever, if you're the only marketing person, then again, that identifies that's it me. as you, even without your first name there. And just mm. take that email example, post 25th of May, when you send out your email that you intended to BCC a whole bunch of people in it, and you CC them, you're in breach because you have just shared personal data with a whole bunch of people. Well, speaking about being in breach, I'm going to be in breach of not playing the news unless we play this first. Sarah, I'm going to ask you after the news why you chose this because I'm going to run out of time. Um, this is a fabulous piece of music, Hotel California by the Eagles, and we'll be back after the news. Live. And welcome back to BizBuzz. My name's Mark Harris. I'm here with my co-presenter, Mike Duckett. Oh, I'll say it. Go on. You want to say it? Go on. What do you want me to say? Tell me you remember your name. Uh, Mike Duckett. Fantastic. I can't count. And well, no, we have four guests because I can count. And uh, our guests today are Hilary Messer from Gardner Leader and Chris Bantop from BC Marketing and uh, Joanna Helen from Smartcom. And we now turn to the fourth guest, Sarah Lawton from Simply Operations. And um, my first question for you is, is you were delightful to choose Hotel California for us. And I'm really sorry that we missed about the last 20 seconds of, of outro. But hey, you can't have everything in life. Um, so why, why did you choose that? What's the relevance of GDPR? Well, other than being a great song, um, I was interested the other day when I Googled for ideas um, to find that actually in recent months it's become an IT industry metaphor illustrating a key concern over the use of cloud applications. And as the song says, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Wow. In other words, how do you know what happens to your business data once it's uploaded it's onto there. a cloud? Well, very Scary interesting. Stuff. And I am have to say, you've now ruined Hotel California for me because I'll be thinking about <laughs> that about next that. time. And that's all right, I'll let you know if you haven't. And I'm going to play it later and listen to the whole outro, including the last 20 seconds. So, hey. So, um, Simply Operations, we, we've said before that you're about the actual doing it bit mm -hmm. of GDPR so if somebody comes to you small business one to ten employees as you said earlier um, and says okay do it well what, what is it what do you actually do for people so the very it sort of really go back to the very beginning and start off by sitting down and asking them right what data have you got yeah what you know what sort of information do you hold on people where have you got it because it's not necessarily in one central place okay um and what's your lawful reason for holding it because actually you know we've talked about marketing and getting consent but actually there are a number of lawful reasons for why you might hold that data and for me i think that's sort of you have to start there before you can decide on what you're going to do or what what you're going to need to do because okay. one of, the, one of the, the places of data that strikes me we haven't mentioned is human resources. That's right. They're going to yeah. have a lot of information about people, yeah. aren't they? So there's human resources angle. There's also an IT angle as well, and looking at your cloud, as we've just mentioned, and looking mm -hmm. at your security and how you're transferring data and all of that side of it. Yeah, there's a number of different angles that you'd come that you come at. There, there is so much. I just thought of something that I have to say to Mike later, but um, oh, I'm in trouble. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you about a little tiny thing you could have done better. There you go. Yeah, see, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay, so why doesn't somebody just do that? All of that themselves? Yeah, they can go to the ICO website and download it, and off they go. Of course, yeah, they can. Um, but I mean, coming from it, I, I've sort of done quite a lot of research there's a whole load of um things amazing how many people haven't thought about um where they might you know just some of the smaller things i was speaking to someone the other day and he's, he was proudly saying yes we've looked at our crm systems we know what we're what we're doing and i mm -hmm. said okay that's great but have you checked in individuals and what's what's on their email accounts have you checked 
um, what Their spreadsheets draws. they've got or what spreadsheets they've got yeah. where they've got things you know it could be absolutely anywhere and so it, it's yeah it's having someone who's actually already um, sort of looked into this and and I suppose them. in a lot of respects you don't know the answers because they only, only they know which employees have got but but what you know is the questions yeah and that I'm I think thinking. is really important is to know what the questions are. So, uh, with with work that you've been doing so far, because clearly this has been as around as Hillary said for a couple of years now, but it's really coming to a head this calendar year. I think is when it's really focused. Attention has become focused. So, what are people getting wrong in your experience? What are they not doing that they should be, or is it just the whole blooming thing? <laughs> Um, I think a lot of people, um, there does seem to be sort of quite a focus on the consent, um, not necessarily so much about thinking about their data, where, you know, where it's stored, is it secure? I'm finding that that's sort of something I'm having to get people to just have a think, just have a little think mm. about. Um, and not necessarily getting it all, you know, getting it written down or getting it sort of recorded some, somewhere, this is what we've got and why and what we're going to do, what we do about things and so you're actually helping people procedures in place. make that happen that's right yes okay that's part of it and and if there was we, we talked about yeah joanna's top tip is the the ico template if you had a top tip for somebody who said i'm really sorry i'm not going to use your services i'm gonna go off and do it on my own but give me a top tip <laughs> you'd say well pay me for it no you wouldn't because you're sure. nice <laughs> what what's what's the real big thing what do you think is the one of the most important angles for you um i, I think it's something actually we trapped on before that actually you know what you need to keep coming back to why are you holding this data? Do you need to hold this data? And actually, you know, and what is your lawful reason for it, for holding it? Okay. And, okay, so if I if I run a small business, hypothetically speaking, and you ask me that question, and I've got data going back years on people I dealt with years ago, and I've got that data in case they come back to me. You never know, they might do that. Is that lawful? Not really. I mean, you'd you would need you'd need to have a you'd need to have a look at yeah ask a lawyer. yeah, <laughs> ask a, yeah I'd say ask a lawyer because okay. it what you know why you know um, I was talking to someone the other day and they've got people who they've seen from a, a counselling perspective and who might come back and actually you need a bit of a you know long it's term. useful to have a bit of a history well, after, data on people like yeah that, yeah after but, after our next piece of music i will ask a lawyer when we get to a yeah. bit of a, a, a final wrap up and a few general questions that's that's for certainly one of mine but would you actually say that to a client so you're more of a you you, you are purely the operations side that's if it right. gets too nitty gritty then it yeah. might well be so the idea with my business then i i could project manage um, sort of helping a client to become yeah. GDR compliant and yeah. that would be knowing when to bring the lawyers in when to bring you know an IT professional in when to bring marketing people in okay because it sounds to me yeah if you if you look at any business these days whether they got one employee or a thousand they're all pretty lean you know yeah. there's not many people you talk to when you say how's work they never say I'm really quiet <sighs> in my dreams everybody's busy busy maxed out 46 50 hour weeks whatever mm -hmm. So I guess one reason to come to you is because people probably could do it on their own, but they just don't have the time. That's right, yeah. They don't have the time and they, you know, they, they don't, don't have the time to either to, either, yeah, for where to start, to know how to do it practically, to um, sort of do the research into it. Mm. It's all of that. Mm. Well, you're looking at me because I'm thinking now a little bit more broadly about uh, personal data. Mm -hmm. Why I've got it, where I've got it. Let me get closer to. Let me get closer to you. <laughs> <laughs> and and the microphone. Yeah. Uh, where I've got it, why I've got it, and now I'm thinking. Actually, I've got bits of information all over the place. But yeah. So, for example, in my phone, I've got obviously my relatives. I don't think that's that they're. they're that's personal. That's no, right. but mixed in with it is all the work contacts, including him. Mark, me. does that right. mean I've got to get permission from Mark to hold his name and telephone number in my no, phone? No, because consent is simply one lawful basis for holding the information. You may have other lawful bases for holding that information. So you have to go back to, you need to do an audit. You need mm. to look at what you've got and say, why have you got it? 
is it accurate? Mark said he might have information that he's been holding for years and years and years. Well, actually, it might be outdated. You definitely shouldn't be holding outdated information. Does, does it mean he's got to, like, uh, got to write to everybody in his his, his, his phone yeah. or his Outlook and say, is this accurate? Or, or, yes, if you're not sure that it's accurate, but, of course, if it's inaccurate and you've got the wrong number, you'll call the number <laughs> and you'll get some stranger on the phone. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah. it's an opportunity to have a cull. It's an opportunity mm. to start with a right. clean slate to do it properly and actually you go through your desk drawer and you find business cards that you've had forever and yeah. you ask yourself well why have i got it yeah, you know yeah. the reason why yeah. it was given yeah. to you in the first place yeah. was probably because yeah. they wanted your business not the other way around yeah. you know yeah. the, your basis for any consent might still be valid but actually you might need to revisit that because they probably didn't give it to you for the reason you're now using uh, well, it. After the next piece of music, we're going to come back and, and consent is one of the things that I want to ask a few detailed questions on and I'll be interested in everybody's opinion about what they think is right and what they're going to be doing. Um, but before we do, Mike, you, you very rarely like choose a piece of music for us. I like and to leave it to the, the slot to my guest. Absolutely. I don't the and, slot. and when you do, you it's always nearly the always the Rolling Stone. Nearly away, yeah, yeah. So I, I turned down your first choice. Can't remember what it was, but it was like 11 minutes long or something. So sorry. And you chose Tumbling Dice. So we're going to play that. And in the second, I'll ask you why you chose that. Probably just I wouldn't cause, bother. No, because you like it. But the mistake you made was, oh. hey, you get off of my cloud. Oh, you see, I hadn't made the connection. I'm not good at... Neither had I till connection. Sarah was talking there about the cloud, and I thought, ah, oh, yeah. So <laughs> we're not going to play that. We're going to play Tumbling Dice instead. I uh, I do like the Linda Ronstadt version, but I do like the Rolling Stones version as well. I was going to play Linda Ronstadt just to annoy you, but I'm not that horrible. So here are the Rolling Stones. So, um, so let me throw a question out at you. To, to we're in sort of the last ten minutes or so of the show, um, but we can. I've got a feeling we're going to roll on a little bit accidentally. So, listeners, don't go away at half past three. We might just keep going a bit because we're naughty like that on this show. Um, so, I am at a networking event, and a nice person gives me their business card, card, and I give them mine, and you know that's what happens and then they email me and say I really think what I sell might be of interest to you given what you've said to me and I think we should have a coffee and chat about it I haven't opted in to do that I just swapped business card we had a nice chat it's, they offered me their business card it's polite to offer mine back again I didn't give explicit information for anything so can is so that going to change the, the whole moment, networking but after the 25th of May if you are going to... Please don't tell me I can't do that. Yeah, after the 25th of May, what I would recommend you do is you've had your business cards reprinted and you've got a little word on the... either a box on the back where, depending on who you're giving it to, you tick it saying, here is my consent for you to store my personal data and contact me for wow. whatever it is. Um, but you see, that firm will have used Sarah's services and that doesn't quite fit the wording of what they've said and it's not quite according to the rules as they understand them, so it's not good enough for them. Is that going to be... I didn't get that one. I okay, that if, one if, if, I, if I've got on my business card wording that says I give you permission to call me and yes. store my data, that's not going to match your internal standards no, that's at fine. your that's, business. It, it's fine because that will be a record that you have got that person's mm. opt-in, informed, okay. unambiguous Do consent. I have to sign it with a pen or, or is just having that no, pre-printed, okay? It, it is Okay, and documented. what about, I'm sorry, but I do look deeply at practicalities. What if I'm happy to give my car, but actually I don't want you? Have I got to have two different cards, one with permission and one without? <laughs> yeah. A yes yeah. and a no to, card. To be, <laughs> frankly, to be safe, yeah, the I'll recipient put... of that card, if they do not, after the 25th of May... Make sure that they have got a record that you have given consent mm -hmm. for your personal data to be used for X, Y, and Z purposes, the specified yeah. purposes, okay. then they are potentially in trouble. So let's ask, can I, can I just ask the same question but in a slightly different way of Joanna? Do, do you, does Smartcom exhibit at you know, trade exhibitions and things? No. Okay, that kills that question. Sorry. <laughs> does does PC marketing anymore. exhibit at trade exhibitions? Whatever. Somebody's got an exhibition stand 
and one of the they're collecting data they they read your barcode they collect your business card they have their own form that fills in are all those going to have to be changed in the way that you're saying yes. the business card yes would? depending on what they intend to do with it because they're mm. not collecting it for any other reason than to get in contact with you in some shape or form when i give a business card to someone i am hoping that they will contact me to use my legal services when someone gives me their business card it's a reciprocal arrangement that's what they're expecting that's not the same as invite me to an event uh, send me a newsletter mm. pass my information on to someone else but if you're content for that in order to protect yourself as the recipient of that information, you need to have it documented. That's so, what the regulation says. So, Sarah, would you help me as your client to compose a standard email that I send out to people that says, lovely to meet you at whatever event, thanks for your business card, I'd love you to opt in, please, so that I can talk to you? Yeah, that's something you can easily do. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was a. This is a. This is a bit of a conundrum, a real one, because I've had two people say this to me in discussions about GDPR. They said, "Well, how do I do this?" Because, and I'm sure this is silly, but I've got to write to them to get consent to write to them. But how can I write to them without having prior consent? No, that, that that's th nonsense. That, that is okay, particularly is, if you've got this information already. There's like a yes, six exactly. month window that you can write to people and say, "Look, I've got it." Can I have your, your consent to carry on using it? Ah. If after that six-month period they haven't responded, that's in the bin. It's in the bin. Okay. Really? Yeah. So, yeah, no reply is not um, a yes. It... Chris, go on. No, the, the flip side to that and something that the regulation is putting in place is that every business must be able or every person must be able to go to that business to unsubscribe in a very easy and yep. transparent way. Mm. So... You know, there is that counter side that businesses have to put in place ways for for people to, to go and unsubscribe. Mm. That's quite true. I sometimes unsubscribe from things and I, within a second, get another email. Well, I'm going to unsubscribe, but it's an email saying, we have unsubscribed you. It may take up to 10 days to take effect. And every time I... Really? Really? It's going to take you 10 days to flick a switch? No one's going to flick a switch. It's all automatic. Can they? Should they be able to do that now? And, and will they be able to get away with that? I after? suspect the 10 days is allowing themselves some leeway because those of them that haven't done the audit won't necessarily know where they've stored all of the things and if you were subscribed to have 10 different lots of information they've got to go off to 10 different places to untick the well unclick you or whatever it is the magic they do in the background um, but most of them I suspect are just doing that in order to give themselves um, an opportunity to make sure that any automated setups have got time to run their course because otherwise it does become quite burdensome mm. Okay, and, and another angle that I was going to think about is, is okay, so the, the, I'm just pointing at the two of you, that doesn't help the listener. Chris and Joanna, you're both marketing people, so you do marketing. If someone says to you, I've not opted in, or if you think I have, you've made a mistake, I'm going to complain, I want to jump up and down and shout a lot. How should a business respond if somebody's saying that to them? I'm sorry to just throw that at you out the blue um, with no prep. No, the, there are time frames in which people need, businesses need to respond. Is that right? It, yeah, it, it depends on what is being asked. And one of the key things for all businesses to be able to recognise is something called a subject access request. So if you get an email saying, you know, I'd like to know what information you hold about me, at the moment you can charge albeit a nominal sum but you can charge for delving into your archives to find out the information and you have 40 days in which to respond come the 26th of may um mm -hmm. so the next day um you will have one calendar month to respond you won't be able to make any charge and the important thing is that um, you need to know where you're going to go and find that that information. And you also need to keep a record, and this is a bit ironic, that that person requested the information to be deleted, um, if, they, if they're asking for the information to be deleted, because that, that's a right they have at the end of the day under the new regulation. Um, you, you, we were talking about this when we met up before the show for, for coffee, that you need to have a record that they asked to be removed in case they contact you again. Oh, yeah. my God. 
So how yeah, do you do record, that? Because then you've got a record of them. So yeah. if I say Hillary Messer asked to be removed, well, there's more than one Hillary Messer in the world, not that many, and no, only one as right. nice as you. But Some hey. are more unique so than others. which Hillary Messer? Oh, that's Hillary Messer from Garden Leader with this mobile and this email asked to be removed. So then I've got data on you. Yeah, that's right. That's the other conundrum somebody raised with me is I'm always going to have the data. Yes, but you're not using that data and processing it for a purpose ah, other right. than a legitimate purpose, but which that, is But that data could still compliance. be stolen if I... If it I, could, I, and mm. if it's stolen, you are in yeah. big trouble. Okay, that brings us to the breaches. By design. Yeah. Yeah. That brings us to the breaches, which you said mm. we want to quickly mention, because you mentioned it as well, Sarah. I read something here about um, other GDPR controllers must report data breaches and that it's a good idea to do that. For example, Uber, where they had a data breach and they didn't confess it. Uh, they covered it up and paid the people a ransom. They're saying here they would have been well advised not to do that because they could be up a fine millions now under the new regulation. So mm-hmm. the moral is if you, have, if you have a breach of data confidentiality, confess to the information commissioner my advice is yes do that you're you're likely to be treated more leniently if you do i i I had um i had that scenario of a client contacted and they believed that they'd had a data breach and so that's what i said just contact the ico and talk to you with them yeah and and the other thing just about data or or breaches or breaking the rules is you said uh, before we close the show which we've got to do do in a minute because the time has whizzed by at the very beginning an hour and a half ago hillary you said um it's about the protection of the consumer so for me wearing my consumer hat someone calls me or emails me or whatever's and i know that i opted out and i know they're not supposed to be doing it and that's that's a non issue so I want to complain. Yep. What, what do I do? Go you, on the ICO website? Yep, you complain to the ICO. You may also, in certain circumstances, be entitled to sue in the civil courts for compensation. And the perpetrator mm. may also be liable to criminal sanctions. And that's something we haven't touched upon. Mm. But wow. th- there's, there was a case relatively recently. Somebody was working for, I think, a care home. And for reasons best known to themselves, decided to email from their work address to their home address information concerning the residents, and they've gone to prison. Oh, wow. Yes. Let me, it's a breach. Just, let me ask you another question. about In your case particularly, but my, I, I know a medical person who might be listening who has to keep medical records. Do they have to write to everybody and say, can I keep these? And if they are, because I was going to say, if they don't get a response... And they throw them away, and some case comes up in five years. They're in. They could just have to say, "Well, no. I don't know who you are." Well, we we were talking. Well, I was talking earlier about personal data. There is a second category of personal data, sensitive personal data, which will relate to people's medical records. And actually, if you're running a care home, that's relevant to you yeah. because people in care homes tend to have um, rather more personal information that you're going to hold on them. But genetic profiling, medical records, disabilities, ethnic origins, all of that, that requires a secondary special category of protection and particular um, forms of consent to hold that information. And I believe that's covered by Article 9. Most of the exciting stuff is in about four articles of these 99. Um, might be worth going away and having, a, having yes. a read. But if you're in that kind of business, you hold medical information, that kind of sensitive data, I would earnestly suggest you go and get some specialist advice. Do you know what, Hilary? We have different definitions of the word exciting. But hey, <coughs> your tongue may have been <laughs> cheap. But I think hopefully for the listeners, that this has been some expert advice advice between the four of you with a, a, a bit of banter thrown in by Mike and I when we felt the need um, hopefully it's been helpful to them and and they'll be able to move forward with their GDPR as a business and if they're listening as consumers they'll better understand their rights and understand when their rights are being infringed um, Hilary, if, if people are listening and they wanted to get in touch to say, tell me more, I need a solicitor to, to advise me on this, how do they find you? 
they can go to our website, which is gardener-leader.com. My personal work email address is on there. My direct line is on there. And I'm giving you some time on the telephone. You're giving us permission. Absolutely. I am lovely. giving you permission to contact Fantastic. Do you know how many people are listening to this? <laughs> well, I hope more than the six in this room. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's at least six. Um, but no, we're on the internet. It could be zillions because you could get a million phone calls. And um, Chris... Bantock from B Scene Marketing. I'm going to take a wild stab and say you have a website. Uh, yes, we do Excellent. indeed. <laughs> I would certainly <laughs> bloom in hope so. Mm. So if people wanted to contact you and talk about digital marketing services in relation to GDPR or indeed anything else, um, tell us the website. Yeah, if you've got any, any questions, can, you can contact us uh, through uh, www.bscene-marketing.co.uk. Okay, that's B-E, scene. B-E-S-W-N. Hi, from Mark. Okay, brilliant. And um, Joanna from Smartcom, I, wa- I think I want you to do my house. I want you to, I want one of these. But <laughs> you should. We're yeah. great. Excellent. I'll have a little look at the website, but only if you tell me and everybody else what the website is. Uh, we're on www.smartcom.co.uk, and Smartcom has two M's. Okay, and Smart's got one M. One no, in fact, Smartcom's got three M's. Smartcom has three M's, but two M's at the back. <laughs> Do you know what? My, my middle name is Pedantic, so there you go. <laughs> um, and Sarah Lawton from Simply Operations. Uh, there may be some people out there who think, I need help with this, I need somebody to just do it for me while I focus on my business instead of on this so uh, I have, I have, have you by any chance got a website? I have got a website uh, Funny that, go yeah. on, tell us tell us what it is www.simplyoperations.co.uk How did you Very come simple. up with that one then for a company called Simply Operations? Good, <laughs> lovely, marvellous thank you all I consider myself more educated than I was an hour and a half ago and um, hopefully you do too um, in two weeks time my and I will be back here we do um, we do occasionally miss some days but I think we're both here in two weeks time we have a lady by the name of Myra Turek who is uh, an HR lady I'm going to say an HR guru but she'd be embarrassed if I said that and uh, and we have what I think is a first timer on the show Darren Salt who's an IT man and um, just like Hillary has proven that solicitors aren't boring IT men aren't boring either He's, um, he's one of the good guys so we'll be back in a fortnight with that um, we move to the last track to play you today before we belatedly say goodbye. Sorry about that, but hey, such is the way of the world. Um, and this is my choice for the show. And there are people out there in the big wide world who think that... All-